Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks with TalkToProfit.com. Today I want to talk to you about why you should not take the foolish path and deny your riches. Many people pervert a few verses in Proverbs chapter 30 to make an excuse for just being mediocre. And in Proverbs chapter 30 verses 8 through 9 it says, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal, and take the name of my God in vain. Now this sounds humble on the surface, until you read a few verses before that, when it starts and he says something about himself that is very pertinent to understanding these verses. It says, in the beginning of the chapter, the words of Agur, the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Ukel, surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. So he starts this by saying he is more brutish or more foolish than any man. That's not exactly the man you want to then begin to parrot. He raises some good points, but you got to understand he prefaces this with the understanding that he is foolish. Not only just foolish, fool, more foolish than any other man. And he doesn't have the understanding of a man. And this is very often the way people go through life. Well, you know, oh God, give me neither poverty nor riches, as if that sounds humble. Meanwhile, they could never get riches. It's not like it's even an option for them because they won't do the things needed and required to become rich. They never put forth 100% effort. They never do their work as unto the Lord. So they constantly wallow around in mediocrity or poverty and then act as if it's some gift from God that they're in that state because they haven't done their all. They haven't been blessed in life. And then they fall back on verses like this, completely resting them from their context and then acting like that's some noble way to live your life, not to live the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but living beneath that living lower than, not having enough, or just having barely enough, but not to be an abundant blessing that you could be. Just being mediocre, don't have poverty, don't have riches, just in the between, mediocrity, that's all right. You don't want to be full because then you might deny God. Why? If your heart is right with God, you're not going to deny him by having more. How many people have denied God in poverty or even in mediocrity because they feel like they're trapped and they're in a rut, which they are. And yes, you could point to rich people who have denied God, but most of those people were not acknowledging God to get to where they got. They just through hard work and intelligent work got to the position they're in. And yet, if someone is walking with God, how much more so can they be blessed and rise up the ranks to not be mediocre not be poor, but be rich. So much so that it says that Jesus became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. The same book of Proverbs says that the blessing of the Lord it maketh rich and he has no sorrow with it. God's never putting you in a position that you have to choose between success and failure as if that's your spiritual options. If you're successful, you're choosing to go against God. If you're a miserable failure, and mediocrity, that's somehow honoring God. It's not the case at all. Why would you not be able to walk with God and be even more blessed than those of the world? Walk in the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. Have that 30, 60, and 100 fold blessing that Jesus promised you in this life and in the life to come, eternal life. My friend, you're not put here to be mediocre. You're not put here to just get by. You're not put here to not have too much lest you be full and deny God. Why would you deny God? If that's even a thought in your mind, you need to acknowledge your heart's not right with God. If you even think that you would, by getting blessed and having an overflow of abundance that you can then bless other people with, that you're just going to turn your back on God? Why? There's no way you're walking through life with a pure heart before God if you think that riches could turn you from him because they absolutely won't because you know God you know his blessing in your life you know that he is the reason why you even exist 
You know that in Him you live and move and have your being. How could you ever deny Him? How could you turn from Him? And so while this sounds like a, a good verse to be humble, make an excuse for yourself for why you're not succeeding in life, why you're just being mediocre, you're not poor, but you're not rich. But my friend, this isn't the way to live your life. The way to live your life is to look at what Jesus came to give you, to look at the fact that you're redeemed from the curse of law. Why would you be wallowing around in curses? Why would you be wallowing around in the lifestyles of people who choose death and cursing when you choose life and blessing? You're not making the same choices they're making. So you can go out in business, be ultra successful. And not only do you not deny God, you continue to build your spirituality, improve your walk with God and become more of a blessing in this life. You're not this black hole that just takes in money and it's only for you and your family. What's more selfish than that? And that is the average person's mentality. They don't want to be rich because then they'll have too much. Why? How is that a bad thing for you if you're a good person at heart? Only if you're impure at heart, only if you know deep down that you're compromised already would that concern you. The righteous person sees the blessings and wealth and riches and opulence that God brings you as something they can share with other people, that they can be a greater blessing with, that they can give and have it given back to them. That they are more blessed to give than to receive because the giver has an abundance to give. And by giving, they get some 30, some 60, some 100 fold return on their giving. So they can never outgive God. They can never give more than God's going to return back to them. They're always abundantly blessed. And that's something people with this mentality, they don't want to have too much because then they'll deny God, don't understand. And when a man starts off by saying that he's more foolish than any man, he doesn't even have an understanding of men, maybe take him at his word and understand that he's just speaking in a poetic way, knowing who he is, knowing his heart, that he doesn't want to have poverty or riches because he knows if he gets full, he's probably going to deny God. Or if he gets too poor, he'll probably steal and take the name of his God in vain. But that's not you. You can see the blessing of the Lord, use it in good ways, and in turn, be even more blessed because of your generous, loving nature. God didn't put you here to be miserable. He didn't put you here to suffer and learn a bunch of lessons through suffering and misery. He put you here to be a blessing. And my friend, if you're wallowing around in poverty or wallowing around in mediocrity and re hindering yourself, stopping yourself, refusing yourself from the riches of God in your life, you're keeping yourself back from doing all you can to the glory of God. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.